It's time for episode 133 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. You're about to learn everything you've ever wanted to know about one of the most famous martial arts women to ever grace the screen, Michelle Yeoh. Let me introduce myself. I'm Whistlekick's founder, but I'm far better known as your host for this show, and my name is Jeremy Lesniak. Whistlekick, I'm so happy to say, makes the best sparring gear, apparel, and accessories for practitioners and fans of traditional martial arts. I'd like to welcome any new listeners and thank everyone that's returned. All our past episodes, show notes, and a bunch more great stuff is available over at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. From that site, you can sign up for our newsletter, and I hope that you will, because we offer exclusive content to subscribers, discounts, and it's the only place to find out about upcoming guests. Have you checked out our website, whistlekick.com? That's where you can get some of our incredible sparring gear or comfortable shirt, maybe some sweatpants. We have a lot of different things there for sale, and it's changing all the time, so please, if you haven't been over there lately... Check it out. Help support us. Keep the show going. Let's talk about Michelle Yeoh. You may know her from Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Maybe you remember her from the 1997 James Bond film, Tomorrow Never Dies. However you know her, or even if you don't, her career has been tremendous, and she's had an impact on many of the movies and TV shows you've seen. I would go so far as to say she's had a tremendous impact on the martial arts. Michelle was born in 1962 in Malaysia to Chinese parents. She started ballet at four, moved to the UK at 15, and majored in ballet at the Royal Academy of Dance in London. At 20, she won the Miss Malaysia pageant, which led to some television time. One of those appearances was alongside Jackie Chan in a commercial, which caught the eye of someone in Hong Kong. Just two years later, she was acting in her first martial arts movies. She did most of her own stunts, which would become common for her. She married the guy who ran the production company, that first one that brought her into film, at the DMB group, and ended up retiring from acting, which was kind of sad. But then they divorced in 1992, and she came back pretty strong, starring alongside Jackie Chan again, but this time in Police Story 3. Now, you may have seen the movie a few years later when it was released in the U.S. in 1996, but at that point it was called Super Cop. And this was the first time I had ever seen Michelle Yeoh, and I was blown away. Michelle played Inspector Yang in the movie. Over the next few years, she had a lot of work, and while much of it was well-received, we didn't see much of it here in the United States. Some of you may have seen the Jet Li film Tai Chi Master, which is from 1993. She co-starred in that. And really, the notable exception at this time was in 1997, when she starred alongside Pierce Brosnan in Tomorrow Never Dies, the James Bond film I mentioned in the intro. She did all of her own fight seats in the film. Pierce Brosnan even went so far as to refer to her as a female version of James Bond, pretty much because she was, you know, such a badass. She was offered the role of Seraph in the second and third Matrix films. And for those of you that nerd out on those movies, you know how solid a character that is. But she had a scheduling conflict. And that conflict, that rejection must have really disappointed the writers over there because they went back and changed the character to a man. Now, everything changed for Michelle Yeoh in 2000. That was the year that most of the world saw her for the first time. She played Yu Shu Lin in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. And from that role, she earned larger roles and had a greater presence in the U.S. Fun bit of trivia from Crouching Tiger, Michelle didn't know Cantonese at the time. She learned all of her lines phonetically. I can't imagine doing that, let alone well enough to be nominated for seven major movie awards. She did win one, International Star of the Year, from Show West. I'm going to break from the script a little bit here, because as I'm reading this, I'm remembering the first time I saw Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and how struck I was by Michelle's presence on the screen. The commanding skill she had over her body over every fight scene she was in. And I won't say that, you know, I I fell in love with her, but I fell in love with the way she moved her body. And it was absolutely incredible. And if you've seen the movie, and I'm I'm hoping all of you have, if you haven't, uh, I'd almost say, stop listening to this. Watching this? You're not watching this. Stop listening to this right now and go watch that movie. Because as martial artists, we have so few movies that really, I think, unite all of us. Karate Kid is one, Enter the Dragon, and I'd put Crouching Tiger third. It blew me away. But 
back to what I was talking about. From Crouching Tiger, it was a barrage of bigger movies. Memoirs of a Geisha, Fearless, and The Mummy, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. Now, earlier this year, we're recording this in 2016, she revisited her role as Yushu Lin in the Crouching Tiger sequel, Sword of Destiny. She's also had a recurring role on the acclaimed TV series, Marco Polo, and appeared, so- and appeared alongside Jason Statham in the action film Mechanic Resurrection. As impressive as this list is, I'm leaving out plenty. There's a reason she's known in Hong Kong as the Queen of Martial Arts. Now, of course, this is a martial arts podcast, so you may be wondering a bit about Michelle Yeoh's martial arts background. I was too. Through all of the research I was doing, I didn't come across anything mentioning her rank or styles trained in, so I set out to find why. And that's when I came across several references that I found shocking. Michelle Yeoh has no formal martial arts training. Initially, this really bothered me. And I sat back for a while, honestly. I considered scrapping this episode entirely. We can't have an episode about someone who isn't a martial artist. And then I realized something. Michelle Yeoh is not only a martial artist, she's an incredible martial artist, however we want to define it. She's amazingly skilled, and she's had some of the greatest instructors you could imagine. With her dance background, she was able to learn martial arts moves very quickly. Anyone that has formal training in dance knows how regimented and demanding it can be, much like martial arts. The body control and awareness that she had allowed her to learn martial arts movements quickly and become skilled pretty fast. We teach new students the same way, through repetition of movement, right? On a movie set, you've got to drill your movements, your lines, your fight scenes, all of it, until you get it right, just as you would in a martial arts school. Look who was teaching her. Look who she acted alongside. Who taught her martial arts. Jackie Chan, Jet Li, Cynthia Rothrock, Sammo Hung, Donnie Yen, Chow Yun Fat. Could you ask for better instructors? Not to mention the numerous stunt coordinators, stunt doubles, and all the other amazing people involved in making sure everything looked good in her movies. Not only is it not for me to claim someone is not a martial artist, I'm embarrassed to say that I even considered that thought. Michelle Yeoh has done a tremendous amount for the martial arts by portraying strong, skilled women, something the martial arts could use more of in film. I found a quote during my research that really summed everything up for me, and it proved that not only should she be considered a martial artist, but she's passionate about the arts, at least the way they come across in film, and that shows a lot of respect overall for martial arts. Here's the quote. The reason why I decided to wait two years after the Bond movie and to work with Ang Lee in a martial arts movie is because I really believe that this genre deserves more respect and dignity than it's ever been given. Before, people saw it as a fairy tale. They felt they could take it easy, but it shouldn't be about that. It's so steeped in our culture, it should have more depth to it. It's never easy to find that balance when it's such a magical type of film to make you accept our soaring to the skies. It was a risk, but when we did this movie, it was for a Western audience. Obviously, she's talking about Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and the dedication that she's expressing there, you know, pretty incredible. What more is there really to say? I've come out of my research with far more respect for Michelle Yeoh than when I went in. Trust me, there was plenty of that to start with. I'd love to know what you thought about today's episode and how you feel about Michelle Yeoh. What's your favorite movie that she's been in? Whatever you want to say, you can say it on any of our social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram. Just search Whistlekick. You can leave a comment on the show notes page at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com or when we release the episode on YouTube. If you want to be a guest on the show or maybe you have an idea for a Thursday topic, go ahead and fill out the form on the website. And don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter so you can stay up on everything we do. Learn more about our products at whistlekick.com. That's all for today. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.